WWE 2K24 Showcase Mode is bad. It's been 10 years since WWE 2K14's 30 Years of WrestleMania mode was released. And somehow Showcase has gotten significantly worse since then. So let's talk about what 2K got wrong this year and how they can improve this dying mode moving forward. So I'm going to break this down into three categories. We're going to make it really simple. Three big things that WWE 2K could improve moving forward with showcase mode. And the first point I want to talk about is immersion. Now, the point of this mode is to get immersed back in time to these WrestleManias, these epic moments within the history of this great show, the biggest spectacle in wrestling. And it just doesn't really feel that way at all. The first thing I would say is the fact that this mode has no commentary at all. And you're just listening to music that is sometimes really just loud and awkward behind the match. It's terrible. I don't think it would be that hard to put some basic commentary behind this mode and then just have a couple key points that the commentators talk about to keep it within the time frame of the match. It was done in 2K14. It could very easily, I think, be done in this mode. The fact that it doesn't have commentary at all is a joke. And it takes you out of the immersion of this mode almost immediately. And then on top of that, we'll get to the second part now, which is the fact that this mode doesn't have entrances for the most part is kind of unbelievable considering that entrances are literally in the game. Once you finish... The, all the objectives and unlock the characters and the arenas, you can actually just load up a quick play match, as you'll see here on your screen. We're loading up a quick play match, and there's entrances. Undertaker, Shawn Michaels, they even have some of them are even special entrances along with theme songs. So it's just a really weird decision to put entrances, to put theme songs like Stone Cold's theme song, Shawn Michaels' special WrestleMania entrance in the game, and then just not have them do it at all in the mode, and you just hop right into the match. I, I just don't understand that. Again, we want to feel like we're building up to the big match at WrestleMania, and part of WrestleMania builds and excitement, at least for me, and I know a lot of people, are the entrances. Seeing these guys walk down to the ring, those are the things that you remember, especially in the more recent WrestleManias, and I, I just don't understand. I, I just don't understand how entrances are not in this mode at all, despite them literally being in the game. Another little thing I did want to mention as far as the immersion aspect before I move on to my next point, I don't really like the fact that Corey Graves does those talking about the match before and then it hops right into it. Again, I'm going to go back to WWE 2K14 and their 30 years of WrestleMania mode. And I really liked how they showed, sometimes they showed the vignettes for the matches. Sometimes they made custom vignettes, but it really felt like you were about to watch the match for the first time. That's more just a personal preference though for me, but I think that there are people out there who would probably agree with that. So the next thing we'll talk about is the number of matches in this mode and the amount of objectives there are for each match. So in this mode, there are 21 matches for 40 years of WrestleMania. In WWE 2K14, there were 43 matches for 30 years of WrestleMania. Now, not all of those matches even had cutscenes. Some of them just had entrances. You played the match and you moved on. But it was still cool that it was there. It was still cool that, oh, I got to play Undertaker Diesel at WrestleMania. Even though there wasn't a cutscene, it was still cool to play through that match. Instead, in this game, they just decided not to do that. Instead, they were going to have only 21 matches, but they were going to make an insane amount of objectives for each match. I average it out to about 17, 18 objectives for each match, which is insane when you think about it. And a lot of the objectives are extremely repetitive. 
So I'll show here on the screen, I was playing through this mode and I played back-to-back -back matches and the objectives were pretty much the same. I felt like I was pretty much doing the same thing. If you're going to make the objectives repetitive, at least have more matches and have like four objectives per match as opposed to 17. I actually did like in this mode how they didn't show you all of the objectives at once. So even if you just had six objectives and showed us one at a time and cut scenes in between there until up in the end of the match, I wouldn't mind that. But 17 objectives and a lot of them is damage your opponent's leg, get him in the southeast corner and grab him. It's just over and over and over again. To me, was a mistake on 2K's part this year for this mode. And last but not least, we have to talk about Slingshot technology. Within the Slingshot technology, I'm also going to talk about the copyright issues that arise in this game for content creators. So we're going to compare here on your screen 2K14 and WW2K24 and some of the bigger cutscenes, and you're just going to see the difference. And it is obviously a clear difference when you are watching it in the game versus when you are watching the the match. Some of these matches, you might as well just watch the match. Some of the cutscenes for the real life footage is so long, you might as well just watch the match. At least you would get commentary. Uh, Hulk Hogan Ultimate Warrior I talked about, that match was basically what seemed like all just watching the match. Most of them are. Most of them are, are two to three minute clips at some points. It's just way too much. It is way too much. I think I speak for everyone that plays this mode and has played it for a while. When I say we would all prefer shorter cutscenes if they are the game and not real life footage. I'm okay with a cutscene being 30 seconds a minute instead of two, three minutes and lowering the objectives and having those be the whole game, nothing else. And the worst part, as you've seen on your screen here is I've cut out where some of the things stop because you can see how good the cutscenes could look in this game because this game is fantastic looking. So those little cutscenes you get right before it transitions over to the slingshot technology look so good. And that's the most frustrating part for me is it's clearly there on what this could look like and how awesome it could look. And instead they've went this route and it's it's awful. It's truly awful. It takes you out, again, talk about immersion. It takes you out of the immersion of the mode completely. So not only does Slingshot technology take the user out of the mode as far as the immersion aspect of it pretty quickly, in my opinion, especially with no commentary, it also doesn't allow content creators to upload this mode unless they cut out the real life footage. So WWE has decided that they're gonna put copyright strikes on anyone who includes the real life footage, despite it being a WWE 2K24 game, they own the footage that's in the game and you are just trying to play the game and really promote the game and promote the showcase mode, no pun intended, that is a part of this game. This is the selling point of the game is 40 years of WrestleMania. It's one of the covers. And yet, notice how no one's really uploaded it because why would you want to watch as a, a viewer a video where you have to just cut out the biggest parts of the match? Pretty much every single pin or submission or ending you won't be able to see this is just the most mind-boggling thing to me of this whole game you literally as a content creator cannot upload this mode anywhere or it will get taken down by wwe i i don't know what else to say other than that is the most ass backwards thinking i've seen from a company in a long time so that's it. That's what 2K got wrong with Showcase Mode this year. Let me know in the comment section below. Did you enjoy Showcase Mode this year? Do you agree, disagree with the points that were made in this video? Let me know in the comment section down below. I will be doing a video in the future talking about what I think they got right in this mode, but I think they got a lot more wrong and hopefully it can be changed in 2K25 and beyond. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and think about subscribing to the channel. It's always greatly appreciated and I will see you guys in the next video.